Hi everyone, welcome to another NLP video. Today we are looking at a paper called Asking and Answering Questions to Evaluate the Factual Co Consistency of Summaries by a bunch of guys from the Facebook AI research team and from New York University. This paper is about summarization evaluation. And as you may know, the task of automatic summarization, uh, its goal is to generate a summary which condenses the main points of an input article. And uh, in particular, when, con when using state-of-the-art um, generative sequence, sequence models for summarization, you're having a lot of problems for evaluation because everyone uses typically um, the Rouge metric for evaluation, which is based on engram overlap between um, the system generated summary and some ground truth summaries written by humans. And there you're having an obvious limit limitation that let's say you have one summary sentence like the weather is very good today. And you have uh, in the ground truth you have the weather is very bad today. So actually this summary that generated the weather is very good today will get almost perfect rouge points um, uh, with rouge one or something like that. However, obviously, clearly, um, it, the meaning is completely the opposite. So um, it's a big challenge of how can we come up with suitable evaluation metrics that can catch such errors. And in this paper, they're proposing a new evaluation protocol called CACS, specifically focusing on um, detecting factual uh, inconsistencies um, generated within the summaries produced by uh, obstructive systems. So here we have an overview image of this CAX approach. Given that you have an input article, um, for example, about a footballer here called Kevin Sin Sinfield, who, um, who is playing at Leeds, it's a football club, and he, he uh, retired or something like that. And on the right, we have a summary uh, about Kevin Sinfield, who scored his first try of the season against Castleford, and so on and so forth. Um, so this is a system-generated summary. The approach of this CAX evaluation method is as follows. So first, you're actually going to be using a question generation model. Um, so here they're, they're uh, relying on question answering and question generation uh, work done, in, in, uh, done before in the past. They're building on top of this work. Um, and so they use a question generation model to generate a large number of questions um, from the summary. Questions like who scored their first try of the season? who was sent to Leeds a Rhino for the first time, and so on and so forth. They generate a large amount of those, let's say 20 of those. And then they use a question answering model. Um, for both of those, they use pre-trained question, question answering, question generation models um, from previous work. And they generate answers by using um, either the source article or the summary and uh, and then basically they compare the answers um, generated by uh, by the question question answering system um, for example here for the first question um, there's a mismatch between the answers produced using the original article and the summary for the last one there's a, a match how many matches did they win so both um, for both you had six matches and basically they count uh, the average number of um, questions that are consistent. And this gives you this CAX score. This is the basic overview of this CAX approach. And yeah, as I said, they use standard um, bird-based models for the question generation and question um, answering models. And one interesting finding is they actually um, annotate um, the CNN Daily Mail and 
x some data sets cnn delimo is a standard one um, for longer so longer summarization of multiple sentences x sum is this extreme summarization data set i think where you have a single output sentence if i remember correctly and um, they annotate using um, human human writers um, asking them to go through each of the um, um, each of these summary sentences i think generated by a bunch of different systems and um, they ask the writers to say okay is the summary sentence factual, factually correct comparison to the article or not um, and so on and so forth and basically what they find is that the cax method correlates much much more strongly with the human judgments of factual correctness in comparison to the rouge um, evaluation methods which are based on engram overlap or to some trans machine translation um, evaluation approaches which are also kind of based on engram overlap uh, but um, they're more sensitive in terms of location uh, of the generated words uh, and also they compare against uh, bird score which is uh, basically a similarity uh, computed using uh, bird embeddings um, and it seems that the CAX approach correlates much much more strongly uh, for all of those for both of those data sets which is nice so it seems to be um, much more reliable for evaluating factual correctness than any of the previous metrics um, furthermore it, they do some interesting ablation type of experiments to test because one obvious concern that comes with this CAX approach is okay what if your question answering or question generation models are not very good um, will this still work it seems that um, even if you're using a low quality um, question answering models here you still be able to, able to get a good Pearson correlation between human judgments and uh, CAX outputs then another interesting um, analysis here is how many questions are, are enough to get a reasonable correlation it seems that 20 is a good number of questions after that you're not really getting any more benefit or only a little bit a little bit of a benefit on top of that if you have less than 20 you are getting less correlation it seems that 20 is a good number um, and 10 already seems to be uh, perhaps a little bit inefficient uh, or not, not enough and this is basically what i wanted to cover this is an interesting um, approach to summarization evaluation uh, i gotta say um, which seems to be addressing the factual inconsistency question much better than uh, any other previous metrics um, so that's great regarding some limit potential limitations of this method um, one that comes to mind is um, which actually they, they do discuss in this paper is what if you are targeting a low resource summarization task or task in a different domain for which you have less data to train these question answering question generation uh, models it seems to kind of like they test on um, they try to do like some domain uh, adaptation style uh, test to see if um, let's say a, a question answering model trained on um, wikipedia can still work for news articles and it seems that it works reasonably well um, however one questions if you're working in a completely different domain let's say scientific articles one wonders whether this will work still and my guess is it will not work as well but one has to try of course another concern is obviously uh, we have a lot of resources for question answering question generation in english but if you want to test on other languages again you're having a problem perhaps this may not work uh, as well and then a final concern is regarding the um, okay so here they're using some bird style models for this question answering question generation but in a couple of years we're going to be having some new models uh, much better ones for question answering question generation and one wonders okay do we keep on 
uh, evaluating um, the CAC style using the CAC style evaluation with the current models or like how will this work with the newer models? Do we have to redo all the evaluations for um, let's say from a couple of years back once we have some super good questionnaires and question generation models? It seems that the evaluation is really dependent on those models and that's just one concern, um, general concern that I have, but um, I'm not sure whether this will be a problem in practice moving on. So this kind of sums up what I wanted to say about this paper, interesting approach, and please like and subscribe for some more reviews of new NLP papers. Thanks.